Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about something other than designing. Well, we are going to discuss the process to a presentation. Now, what does that mean? The moment you decide to prepare a presentation, do you directly open PowerPoint and start designing? Well, I suppose not, right? So, what is the ideal process or approach to go about any presentation? I am going to show you my 10 step process that I follow before I begin my work on any sort of presentation. This process helps me with a clear mindset and a structured approach to start my presentation. Well, hope this process will help you too. So without any further ado, let's get into the presentation. So I also call this a pre-presentation phase. And this consists of three phases, preparation phase, content phase and design phase. So let's begin with the first phase which is preparation. So the first thing that you're supposed to do is draft the narrative. That's step one. Now what does that mean? Let's take an example. Uh, I'm taking a topic, adverse effect of COVID on travel and aviation. All right. Now when you start with narrative, what is your narrative? What is it that you're going to say through your presentation? What are the stories that you're going to tell in your presentation? What is the reason you're creating this deck? You have to answer these questions before you actually begin your work with designing and other aspects of PowerPoint. So this, this step is going to give you a lot of clarity in your mind as to what is that one key message that you're going to say through your presentation. What is the narrative going to be? All right. Now moving on to the step two, which is set your goal and topic. Once you have set the narrative, Decide what is the goal of your presentation and what is the topic going to be. So it's very, very important to have one clear goal. For example, if I am again taking the same example, if I am presenting a deck to a certain audience about adverse effects of COVID on travel and aviation, what is my end goal? Am I trying to raise funds? Am I trying to create awareness? Am I trying to teach people? Whatever your main goal is, keep that very, very clear in your head. All right. Once that is done, we move on to step three, which is very, very, I think, easy and simple thing now in these days, especially when we are living in the age of internet and we have access to some insane amount of data. So what you're supposed to do next is start gathering the information, be it online articles, be it websites, be it social media, be it newspaper articles, start gathering all the information that you need for your topic. Once you know your narrative and your goal, it will be very clear in your mind as to what all information do you need. So that's your step three. Now moving on to the second phase, which is content phase. You're done with the first one, which is preparation, and we're moving on to the second phase. Now, once you have all the data with you, what is the next thing that you're supposed to do? Well, this step is super important. Start grouping and eliminating irrelevant information. Because when we have a lot of data with us, we end up putting most of that on the slides, which we definitely do not want. So keep only the relevant data. Like if you need numbers, if you need highlight, if you need headlines, keep those with you and delete anything that you do not need because that will help you give a lot of clarity of thought. Because the more data that you have, the more clutter your mind and your presentation is going to be. All right. So group your information. You can put it in different folders or different buckets and eliminate anything that you do not need for your presentation. So that's your step four. Now moving on to the next step, know your audience. Well, why is it important to know your audience when you're making a PPT? So let's say again, going back to the same topic, if you're making a presentation on adverse effects of COVID on travel and aviation, and you're presenting to an entirely new set of audience, which means somebody who's not from the industry, from travel or aviation, your presentation will be much more elaborate because you'll have to explain a lot many things, how it was doing beforehand, what happened, what were the numbers like, how it affected, and you know, multiple facts and figures versus if you're presenting to an audience that is already from the industry, who are from travel and aviation, hypothetically or hospitality, they would already know a lot. So your presentation will be much briefer and crisper. So when you're approaching a presentation, it is very important to know in your mind what sort of audience are you going to be presenting to. All right. Now moving on to the step six, add a catchy title. It's a simple one that always helps because a catchy title has a higher recall value. 
and much higher registration in the mind of the audience very simple one right now moving on to the third phase which is design phase so so far i haven't even opened my powerpoint i am only working on the data i am only working on the preparation and the content now is when i actually get into the design phase and even till now i do not need powerpoint all right now what is step 7 this is an extremely important step in the complete process which is storyboarding or wireframing the slide now what do i mean by this well uh, let's say again going back to the same example if i have to start planning my ppt you do not start planning with designing you start with the structure first because otherwise your presentation will be all over the place so once i know my topic once i know my narrative once i have my information the relevant one what i'm supposed to do is start structuring my presentation which means for example slide 1 so you can actually either do it on powerpoint a lot of people prefer doing it on you know notepads and paper because it works for them which is absolutely fine so whatever works for you whether it's a powerpoint or a pen and paper pick that up and start planning your slides so for example my first slide create a box and say title of the presentation so exact content and structure has to come through this one now second slide index slide 1 2 3 4 5 whatever the point is maybe now third slide is going to be context setting where you talk about how travel and aviation was booming pre 2020 so you would need two to three slides on that so i'm going to start putting my data over there since i already have that then we come to the problem right so every story every presentation has to go through a story arc which has three things so setting the context addressing the problem and coming up with a solution all right so which is which can also be called as beginning middle and end so once you are on the second step which is addressing the problem you speak about how covid affected travel and aviation how many airlines got shut down how many countries uh, shut their borders how many hotel chains got shut down etc etc and then we come to the solution saying that now since travel is picking up again this is what we are proposing if your you know key goal is to uh, raise funds you will talk about budgets what is the fund that you're looking for so on and so forth so start sketching each and every slide and when i say sketching and wireframing one thing is to put the content you can also start you know sketching in terms of designs like if you can visualize a slide in a certain way start putting it like that even if it's a rough sketch it doesn't matter you anyway have to prepare a final one but that really helps you when you are actually designing the ppt so that's your step 7 which is something that i i really really uh, recommend all of you to do and this one helps you a lot in structuring the entire ppt and also deciding what sort of look and feel you're looking for now moving on to the step 8 know your design language well there are two kind of presentation one is an internal presentation which you're making for your own organization so if you're making something for your own organization you are well aware of design language design language basically consists of three things colors fonts and shapes so if you're making it for your own organization you would know these three things because you make presentation day in day out for them but if you're making a presentation for an external audience be it an investor be it a client be it a partner firm in that case i would highly recommend you to do a little bit of research of their design language for example if i'm making a presentation for vodafone let's say i would go to their websites i would check their online uh, ads i would check their social media pages i would check their websites to understand what sort of design language they use and the only reason we try to use the design language of the client or the brand that we are working for is that they are used to seeing these colors and shapes and fonts day in day out so the connectivity is much much higher right so always figure out the design language of the brand that you're working for and try to inculcate that in your presentation to a certain extent if not entirely that really helps with you know have an instant connection with them all right so that's your step 8 now moving on to step 9 after you're done with this is when you can actually start grabbing icons and imagery online you already have the structure of the ppt you know what is the content like so you would know what sort of icons and imagery you would need for each and every slide you know that's where wireframing and structuring helps so start grabbing icons and imagery online so that you have a folder ready when you're making a presentation you don't have to look for imagery every time 
So that's your step nine. And once you're done with that is when you actually can begin your work on PowerPoint. So now you can open PowerPoint and start designing. So these are the 10 steps that I generally follow to approach any PPT that I design. And I hope these are going to help you as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to see you in my next video. In the meantime, if you have any particular uh, topic that you want me to make a video on, do let me know in the comment box. And do like, share and subscribe to my channel. And please, please spread the word and share it with your friends as well. Thank you so much for watching my channel.